there and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about books which people growing flowers might enjoy. Some of them are for people who are growing flowers because they want to sell them. Some because people want to grow flowers for fun and enjoyment. There is a bit of going across the two. Um, and I've got a lovely big pile of books here which I'm going to have a look at, take you through. And I've got some little extra ones which might be useful as uh, sort of background reading if you're interested. Um, so let's get going. I have to tell you, <laughs> I have written one or two of these books myself. Um, and uh, obviously <laughs> I would prefer if you had no budget at all that you spent your money on mine. But I am not the only writer of gardening and floristry and flower growing books. So let's have a look at them all and we'll see how we go. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, press the bell icon and I'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we share along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. The link to coffee buying and club joining is in the blurb to all my clips. Right, let's get on. So when I decided I wanted to be a flower farmer, I thought I'd better get some read some books there were no courses really or i could there was there wasn't much information out there there were either sort of quite large very um commercial or what i thought were very commercial sort of serious business type flower farms and i wanted to be something i i didn't dare think that i might be something so established so i did what everybody did in those days which was Order, this lovely book by Sarah Rabin. And I'm sure it's been rewritten a hundred times since, but I've had this for years and years and years, The Cutting Garden by Sarah Rabin, and it is really good. And the reason it's good, <laughs> by the way, it's got a forward by Penny Hophouse, who is the doyenne of gardening. Um, anyway, the reason it's good is because Sarah Raven really knows her subject, really knows her subject. And so she can wear her knowledge very lightly. Um, but she's also written a great many books. And so she knows, you can tell the confidence in the writing. She's so straightforward. It's fantastic, which it makes it easy and quick to read. You don't get lost in any... Um, any writerliness. She's a good writer, so she can write. She, she trusts herself to be able to tell you what's going on. And um, the subjects covered are good. The photographs are lovely. They're always lovely in Sarah's books. Um, it's an inspiring mix. I always think that's a good, a good sign with a book. Not all books can have all, all the varieties in the world listed. There isn't room, um, but this has got a lovely mix. And if you if you look at this, it's something that you can transfer to your own garden. So I found this very, very useful when I started. There we are. That's number one. Number two. And when I started out, this was the only book on flower farming that I could find. And it's called The Flower Farmer uh, by Lynn Bozinski. And she is a flower farmer in Texas in the USA. And this book really inspired how I lay out my patch. I mean, literally the cover, that's how I laid out my patch. And I'm still laying out my patch all these years later. Um, it's got good lists. Again, this is a person who's very confident in their business. And so for a business person, I'd say this was a really, really good book. There are some things in it which I I looked at and discarded as ideas for me. I've never been a big fan of landscape fabric, for example. Um, but she gives you options. And I think if you're starting out as a flower grower, whether you're growing for, for pleasure or profit, it's good to research around the subject and then make your own mind up about things. You know, lots of people do love landscape fabric. I personally absolutely loathe it but I'm sure that in some situations it's really useful and it is not my job to say 
you may or may not do this. <laughs> um, but it is my job, I think, to say, have a look at this and have a think. Another thing I really liked about this was it had, um, it had interviews from time to time with people growing different kinds of flowers in different ways for different reasons. And I found that quite inspiring too, because I didn't know when I was going to be, a, when I decided I was going to be a flower farmer, I didn't know what kind of flower farmer I was going to be. And so this helped me again, examine lots of options. So I really, this, this I'd say is a really, really good book. Um, and then of course this piece would not exist without the mention of Florette um, and Erin in the Pacific Northwest of the UK, of the USA. Um, Florette has been a, a force of nature in the world of artisan flower farming, in the world, worldwide. And what Erin has done is she's taken a business, and I think she's enormously inspiring because, um, A, she's a very good grower, but B, she's a really good businesswoman. And I would look at her books and sort of take apart a little bit what she gives you and look at what her business is. The photographs are absolutely stunning. Lots and lots of good ideas. Again, not an exhaustive list, but a good, a good list. She now, you can buy a lot of your seeds. If you're in the States, you can buy a lot of your seeds from her. Um, and her business has developed into something really very different. But her expertise as a flower grower has grown with her career. So this is her first book, um, The Cut Flower Garden. It's not enormously detailed, but it's inspiring and if you take all the other information that is easily accessible online about Florette and what Erin has done with this fantastic business I think you can mix it all up this is the sort of the beginning of um of books by people who are used to their readers seeing a lot more about what they do from different sources. So the book is just part of the Florette offering, which goes from workshops, demos, television, um, a lot of social media, enormous amount. I mean, she's, she, this is this is very inspiring person. So, um, and the books are beautiful. They're beautiful. I'd say, you know, I've been, I've written novels in my time. <laughs> I'm a, you know, in my dreams, I'm a full-time writer. And so I look at writing and making a living out of writing uh, a lot. Um, I'm always interested in it. And I would say that this is kind of lighter, not a bad way. So it's very accessible writing about flowers and I think it's consciously accessible what what I think what Erin wants to do is make this make people think I can do that I can do that so there's no there's, whereas I think good old Sarah Raven is more um the literary end <laughs> but also confident and uh engaging but this is sort of literary fiction not liter literary non-fiction as opposed to Popular non-fiction. Does that make sense? Um, anyway, <laughs> that's just me thinking about writing. Um, moving on, along then, about the same time as Erin uh, published her first book, um, I published mine, and I'm going to tell you a little bit because uh, I want you to buy them. Let's be straightforward about this. This is The Flower Farmer's Year, How to Grow Flowers for Pleasure and Profit. It is not just for flower farmers. I've tried very hard to be accessible and chatty i took nearly all the photographs <laughs> um which i still look back at them and i think they're charming and um the the drawings are done by fabrizio my husband who's a very talented artist um it's still a very good book though i say it myself it's straightforward no mucking about a bit like me um you do get the character of the person who's writing I think, with um, 
with every book that you pick up. And all these years down the line, this book was published in um, 2014. Uh, it's still going strong. So it's nearly 10 years old. And it's usually in or around the top 10,000 of all books for sale on Amazon in the UK, <laughs> which astonishes me. Anyway, it's full of top tips. I kind of tried to break it up. I Again, I, so this is popular rather than literary. Um, and I tried to, to break it up a little bit so that it's easy to dip in and out of. And very much inspired by Lynn Brzezinski, I also have interviewed other growers. So here we've got Richard from Withy Pitts Dahlias, who I still buy Dahlia uh, tubers from every year. Um, so it feels like this is the community, beginning of my, my community of flower growers. So I wrote that one, and I also wrote this one, Growing Your Own Wedding Flowers, and I really ought to rewrite it, and uh, I should rewrite them both, but um, it's time consuming and not very, not enough money. <laughs> I'm very much driven by money. Um, and this one, uh, Grow Your Own Wedding Flowers, I should redo and just call it Grow Your Own Party Flowers, Grow Flowers for Occasions, be the, you know, the garden florist. Um, and it's very inspiring on that one, on that front. And again, I took all the photographs and again, I look back and I remember, I remember the actual weddings that I'm doing in these pictures. Um, and it's full of useful lists and bullet points. It's very simple. It's a simple way of doing things. Um, and then we get on to some of my colleagues and I'm going to go, I think I'm doing this in order of publication. Um, this, I love this, How to Grow the Flowers. Now, these girls, um, Marianne and Camilla, are based in London. And so they're urban flower farmers. So it's really interesting if you're, if you're, they've got quite a big patch um, and lots of greenhouses. It's an old market garden that they're working in. Again, this is full of good instruction. It's straightforward. I love the photographs really how to do it you know this is it here we have a barrow full of mulch this is what it's really like um and again you can look at it and think be inspired by it i don't think any of these books are definitive i think they're all inspiring in different ways and i would possibly if you can afford you know if you're doing some research i would possibly give myself two or three of them Obviously, you're not going to buy the whole lot, but, um, or maybe you will. <laughs> uh, but I would possibly give myself two or three of them to give myself two or three different points of view. And so what I particularly like about this is the urban, the fact that they're urban flower farmers. And I like the photographs. I like the, you know, there's the hose pipe on the ground. It is, it's real. It's not too pretty. Um, I mean, it's beautifully photographed. It's, it's very useful. Um, and their business is called the Wolves Lane Flower Company. And all of these people are available to look at and see on Instagram and across social media. They all have, they all have followings. And everybody, everybody grows different things. And so I look at, I'll look at, um, I'll look at a page and I think, oh, look, I've never grown that. That's interesting. I might have a look at that. It's worth, it doesn't matter how, how established you are. Pick a book and have a look at the books. Because you might think again, I mean, I, I don't grow chrysanthemums and yet I look at a picture like that and I think, really, am I shooting myself in the foot? <laughs> and then I say, no, I'm not. I don't, you know, let other people grow good chrysanthemums. They're not my favourite thing. Um, but yes, I think this is, a, this is, I really like this book. Um, I think it's a good one and useful and interesting. This one, so this is another colleague of mine, Sal Robertson of the Forever Green Flower Company. And this came out last year, I think. And it's really, the thing I like about Sal, and I've never met Sal Robertson, but we have known each other over the internet, over the social media, since I think we first met on Twitter in probably 2010, 11. I mean, really years ago. Um, and she, again, this is a really efficient business. So this is an efficient book by somebody who has no time for floating about. This is how much are you going to get per stem? Why are you sowing it? Where is the value for it? 
how to do it, how to harvest, how long it's going to last in the vase. It's very, very informative in rather less space than some of the others, you know, literally. And it doesn't weigh much. You could have this in your, you know, you could keep it in your pocket practically. So I like this. I like this very much. Again, interesting, cho interesting choices. We don't all grow the same. I think it's worth looking at where people are. Um, if, you know, if somebody's book is inspiring, they nearly all say where they are. And if you can't see on the book, look them up on Instagram and it'll say on their bio, you know, Flower Farm, in this case, North Norfolk. And you can then think, oh, OK, so she's uh, near the coast, growing on sandier soil. Maybe is that like your conditions? Will that be? So therefore, are the flowers that she's growing going to be flowers that do well for you? Um, whereas, oh, look, there's another, I love this, everybody has this picture of the barrow <laughs> pouring the compost. Um, so have a, it's worth thinking, you know, if somebody has a similar setup to you, then it, in the land space, the land kind of earth they're growing on, then they're likely to be useful books for you. Um, if you can't choose, you're not going to buy all of them, just buy some of them. It's a very good, I recommend this one, definitely recommend this one. I'll do you a thing at the end if I had to choose three. Um, this is a lovely book by, it's called The British Flowers Book, and it was written by um, my friend Claire Brown of Plant Passion, also on Instagram and elsewhere. Claire is a real old horticulturalist. She's, you know, she, her horticulture is in her bones. And, um, but also she's a, a, a doer. She's not a writer by trade. So, you know, Sarah Raven is a writer by trade. That's her, she's also a gardener. She's also a qualified GP, but, you know, but writing comes out of Sarah Raven's hands. She breathes, it just happens, well, it doesn't. No, no, there's no, that's unfair. Um, but she can. That's how she, she can write. Um, and Claire is not a writer. But what she's made is a book which works really, really well for people who don't want to sit and read pages and pages of purple prose. This is all photographs, nearly all photographs. It's really well um, annotated. I love the fact that she's taken work from different florists and used the work of different florists. I'm going to fling through until I find. Yeah, so look, a lovely spring bride's bouquet from Caroline, Caroline Davies studio. So she's, Claire is not pushing her own work. I'm always pushing my own work. Claire is very generous in this. Um, and look, pages of suggestions of good flowers to have at different times of the year which she Claire particularly wrote this because she found that when she was trying to sell to florists they didn't know necessarily what she was talking about the flower they didn't know what was available seasonally in the UK and so this she did it so that she could say this is this this is what you can have and then florists can literally get a visual of what they might be able to have. Because, you know, historically in this, in the UK, and I suspect around the world, look, Fiona Pickles, isn't that lovely? She's a very famous Instagrammer, um, a very good florist. Um, and occasionally there are profiles on different flowers, but really what this book has are pages of ideas of different varieties to have growing together. So if you're a grower, you might think, oh, look, yes, I could, that's a good mix. But equally, if you're a florist and you're thinking, what can I buy? What, what do the British growers have? Chances are they'll have things like this. Of course, I don't grow lupins. So if you're a florist, don't ring me up and ask me for lupins. <laughs> Maybe I will next year. You know, the list is always long of what you can have. I can't grow everything and neither does everybody grow everything. But lovely mixes, lovely mixes. So this is, and you can't get this on Amazon, I think. I think you have to go to Claire's website. So uh, Claire Brown at Plant Passion, um, and you can order it online. It's a, And it's tough. It's not, it's, you know, this will get bashed around in your studio and it won't mind. Love it. Last year, published uh, Millie Proust's book, 
um, gorgeous, luxurious, and photographed, I think, by Ava Nemeth. So look, we've got two books here, both photographed by the same photographer. <laughs> Um, this one's just come out, and this, this is why I'm inspired to do this piece, but I'll get on to that one in a minute. Um, this is a really a lovely, inspiring book. It's very much a book for the Instagram age. You know, the photographs are absolutely, you get lost in the photographs. And it's a book you can read in bed. There, are, It's the story of how Millie got into growing flowers. It's the story of how she ended up living in her house and ended up, you know, turning, restoring this old garden. Um, she says often, I'm not a flower farmer, but she is a, a very good florist and grows a lot of the material that she uses in her work. And I think that's quite nice. I like, I think sometimes flower farmers can be very um, exacting and they're like, well, either you grow the flowers or you don't. And I, I think that's not fair. <laughs> um, I think... You know, so there are lots of people who grow some of the flowers that they work with and then source elsewhere some of the flowers that they work with. But Millie is a really, really good florist and it's really worth buying for inspiring floristry. The only thing that I'm not mad about this book, I, and look, you know, lovely long chapter on rest. So you, this is a book you take to bed and just read it cover to cover. Um, the only thing that I would slightly irritate me but this is because I'm so, I'm so matter of fact, is I want, I want to know what, what bulbs are these? Where's, where's the variety? I would have liked to have had some captions on the photographs, but I do see that, you know, in the world of Instagram, that would might have made the page a bit untidy. And I really, I want, <laughs> I want, I want captions. I want captions, but anyway. Other than that, it is a really, really lovely book and very, very inspiring, I think, for people. Um, certainly people thinking, what what could I grow? Where do we start? And, and the photograph's fantastic. Ava Nemeth is a really, really fantastic photographer. Um, and so she's done a really good job with this one. And she has also done a really good job with this one, last but not least, on the flower growing. Here we have uh, Rachel Siegfried of Green and Gorgeous, also very much on the Instagram, um, has written a book about perennials and actually it covers quite a lot of shrubs as well. This again is, this is literary non-fiction as opposed to populist <laughs> non-fiction. Possibly a book for, it's a really good book, really, really, really good book. Um, if, you're, if you're a newbie, you might find the language, the Latin, strong. Um, if you have uh, have some experience with gardening, then this is going to really give you give you some good ideas. Um, and you hear tea cake whining in the other room. Um, it's got really useful photographs. It's well well captioned. Um, I think it's a really good book. I'm glad I got it. I'm really glad I got it. And I know that I will re refer to it often. Um, Rachel's a really lovely florist. She's a very good florist. And she's probably much more of a horticulturalist than I am in a sort of serious horticulturally sort of way. And so I'd really recommend this book. I think it's really worth, uh, worth having a look at. Um, so there is Rachel Siegfried's new book. And if you want to look at her up on social media, she's green and gorgeous. Um, and it's definitely worth, it's always worth looking, I think. If you find somebody on social media and they've written a book, then have a look and you'll get to know them a little bit before you buy the book. Um, because none of these books are cheap. You know, this is 35 quid. Oh, tea cake. I'm just going to let my dog in. Hold on. Come on. Sleep. Um, but I think, you know, this is, this is definitely 35 quid well spent. So if I were going to have three of these books, I would have this one, Rachel's, it's really good. Um, I would have 
this one uh it's it ought to be available on on amazon some uh, publisher needs to take this on this is a really really useful book uh I, I highly recommend this one so we've got rachel siegfried's the cut flower sauce book i would grow this if i just if i never cut a flower from my garden i would look at this this is really really useful especially if you're a florist or you're dealing with florists who are uncertain what locally grown flowers might look like or how they behave that's a good one and I particularly I'm um, partly because I just admire this person's business I think Sel Robertson is a really good grower I like the fact this is so light it can go in your pocket it's very straightforward really readable um really really helpful so there you go those are my three of these that I would have Ob obviously <laughs> I would this is on top of my books which I would definitely have um, and I thought it would be worth doing some background reading some of the books are very latiny and you know there are names that we use in the UK we use the common names for plants that I use in the UK in America or New Zealand or Australia or South America you know the the language might be different and the reason Latin is so brilliant is that I can say something in horticultural Latin and it's the same around the world. So I can have a conversation, you know, it's like being a, it's like being a churchman, uh, a clerk to a king in the 12th century. Latin is the universal language. Um, so this is a really good little book and uh, Latin for gardeners is really useful and it's really amusing. It's fairly, it's fairly comprehensive. I find it really, really useful. So maybe if you're if you're taking your horticulture a little bit more seriously, uh, but you don't want to do your RHS exams, then uh, this book is really useful. Reference or just you know learn learn the names. I'm always saying to people on social media, why are you doing this? Why are you growing? What not social media on uh, when people. Talk about being flower farmers, growing flowers for a living, any kind of farm your garden kind of enterprise. I say, why are you doing it? And this absolutely fantastic book, English Pastoral by James Rebanks. He's a sheep farmer <laughs> from the north of England. Um, but he writes in an incredibly engaging and interesting way about how farming practices have changed over the last century and how we've gone round in a circle and why and the why i think what she's doing here all the time is looking at the why you'll read this in a few nights in a row it's very beautifully written it's it's very engagingly written it's not a, it's not a tough read and I think it'll really help you think, why? Why do I do what I do and how I do it? Um, so I recommend that one. And last, but by no means least, this is where flower farming hits the big time. So I have a colleague and a student called um, Mel Hudson, who also writes as Joe Silver. And here we have published now <laughs> a novel based in Cornwall about a flower farming sleuth and it even features me I'm very exciting exciting excited and I'm going to read you I love this so chapter 51 hold on the last chapter it says oh, I should have hooked this before <laughs> So here we have flower farming in a novel. So if you like a good read, I recommend this one. And it says, flower farmer tip from Georgie Newbury's The Flower Farmer's Year. Thank you very much. It's always better to sow one variety of seeds into a half seed tray rather than scatter a whole packet into a big one. No one, not even a flower farmer, needs that number of seedlings to prick out. So I feel as though I've hit the big time because uh, I'm now quoted in novel, in a novel, in fiction. 
So um, flower farming goes mainstream. So if you want something fun to read, then I really recommend this, The Wrecker's Curse by Joe Silver, because flower farming can reach its flowery fingers into all corners of life. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Um, and, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.